Hi, this is Chris with Launch Code, and in this video, we're going to set up a one to many relationship in our MVC project using Entity Framework Core. And we're going to relate our event uh, class to our event category class. So, the event category class is one that you created in the studio for the previous lesson. And so, uh, you should have some code very similar to this. And right now, we can create uh, categories and we can view categories in our application, but they're not related to events in any way. Um, if we go over to our event class, we can see that we've been using this event type enum to sort of categorize events. And so recall that an enum is uh, a type that can only have one of a fixed set of values. So right now, our event type class can only have one of these four values. And so this is not that flexible when it comes to um, categorizing uh, objects within an application. So we would like to be able to, for example, allow users to create new types of categories to group events however they like. Right now, though, in order to add a new category, you would have to come in here and add a new value to the enum class and recompile and redeploy. Obviously, that is uh, quite a bit of work. So we're going to essentially replace this event type um, class with our event category class as in as much as it uh, is used to categorize or organize events into different buckets. Okay, and so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna start here in the event class and we're going to replace um, this event type uh, property with a category property. So uh, and this is gonna be of type event category. Okay, and uh, that's good. And then we need one more. And this is going to be an int, and this is going to be called category ID. And so recall that um, we've been using ID as the primary key property in all of our persistent classes. Okay, so what this additional field does is it's going to tell Entity Framework how to populate this particular uh, category property. And basically, because of these, because these names are constructed in the way they are. This ID field essentially just has the same name as the category property with ID tacked on the end. Um, that's going to be a flag to Entity Framework to say, hey, use uh, the value of this category ID column in the database to populate the event category property um, using the foreign key that exists there in that category ID column. And we'll see exactly how that plays out when we get there. But um, we're going to need two fields actually to get this one new persistent relationship here on the event class. Uh, okay, and there are no other references to the event type class in the event class, so uh, we're okay here. There are lots of other references throughout our code base, so we're going to have to fix those. Let's go back to event category, and let's create the other side of this relationship. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new property, and this is going to be a list of events, and it's just going to be called events. And I need to import there my uh, collections package. Okay, and we'll save those. And so this creates just the basic outline of the relationship. There are a couple more things we need to do here um, in order to get the the rest of the, uh, the 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 view and controller code and the view models and all that wired up. But since event category and uh, event are already persistent classes, that will be enough to relate them. Um, and so we'll see later on when we actually run our migration how that relationship gets set up in the database with a foreign key column. Now, though, we want to go through our application and uh, essentially replace any sort of reference to this event type class that we're trying to replace. Replace that with the sort of corresponding functionality for event category. And so the first place I can think of where we do that is in uh, the add event view model. Okay, and so here we have this view model again. Recall that this uh, view model is used to display and render the form, or sorry, to, to, to display and process the form for adding a new event. And so, when someone goes to add a new event, they have to type in the name, description, contact, email, etc., and then they select from that dropdown. They select the type of event or the category they want. So we're going to replace this event type enum with event category. And so I'm going to create a new property here, and this is going to be um, an event category. And I'm going to call this actually, actually, you know what? This is not an event category. This is an int. And it's going to be called category ID. So when we're when we're dealing with these persistent entities, recall that the, the primary key on each of them is going to be 
uh, an integer, and that's kind of what we want to use to identify these objects. So when we're saying, uh, when someone submits the add event view model form to create a new event, we don't necessarily, we're not going to have an object. We, we, you know, we're not going to have a category object in that form submission because it's just plain text in an HTTP request, right? What we're going to use to determine which category the user selected to add the event to is going to be the ID of that category. So what I really want when I submit the form is the category ID. I'm also going to need a collection of categories in order to render my form. So um, I need a collection of all the categories in the database so that I can render a form with the, uh, the various options. And so this is going to be a list of event category objects. Call it categories. Okay. Um, and now uh, one more thing I need to do here is I need to be able to build up this um, list. So we need to be able to pass this list or into the view. Um, well, we're going to pass a view model instance into the view, and we need this property of the view model to contain a list of all valid categories from the database so I can put those in a dropdown for the user. The way we were doing that previously with event types is we had this list of uh, select list items. Um, and so we're going to do something similar, but instead of having just these four static values, we're going to build up a... Um, uh, 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 you know, a sort of a list of variable length that's going to be however long the number of items in the database are, uh, and that's going to be what we use to, to um, populate the dropdown. And one thing I noticed I did right here, this since this is going to be, uh, the data here will be representing event categories, but it actually needs to be a select list item. That's my mistake. So because it's going to be used to render that select list. So let's go ahead and wipe out this guy. And in order for this to be instantiated with a list of all the categories from the database, there's no real good way for me to get these currently in uh, the view model. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a constructor. Um, and this constructor is going to take a list of events category objects. And then it's going to initialize this, uh, this list. So back up here a little bit, got too little far, a little too far ahead of myself. Okay, so right here, what we're going to be doing is we're going to create a new, we're going to say categories equals new list select list item. And then we want to loop over each of the categories. So I'm going to, my constructor takes this, this uh, collection of category objects. Um, and that's going to the reason why I'm having this pass into the constructor is because I'm going to be creating one of these view models in the controller, and the controller is is uh, is the code where we're able to easily query the database. So in that controller, as we'll see in a moment, I'm going to be able to easily query the database and pull out all the categories, and then I can just pass that collection into this view model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for each category in categories we are going to uh, say categories. This is our select list collection that we created. It's, it's uh, empty as we start. And then I'm going to, um, within that, create a new select list item. And then I just need to pass in the various pieces of data here. So we need a value and text. So the value is going to be category.id.toString. And then the text is going to be category.name. So recall that the value is the actual form value that will be submitted when the form is submitted. And the text is going to be the display value. And so for a given category in a dropdown, we want the user to see the name of that category when they're, when they're choosing, but we actually want the value of the category ID to be, uh, to be submitted. And, and if we do everything right, uh, that will be submitted in this particular property uh, when we submit the uh, form. Okay, and uh, let's see, there is... I think one more thing we need to do, since this is a, a view model and it's going to be used with model binding, we need to know our controller, which we no longer have since we added uh, a controller here. So we'll just add a know our controller right there. Oh, add event. There we go. Okay. 
And then uh, one more thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this required. So I'll go up here and make my category ID required. This just means somebody can't create um, a new event without putting it in a category. Okay, and that looks pretty good. So this is the view model. And so let's go back and just see where this view model is used because we're gonna refactor to the controller in a moment. Um, this is the events controller and this is going to be in the add methods. So we've got two add methods. One, this first one handles get requests. It just renders the uh, the form. And so we're calling add event view model here. We're gonna have to refactor this in a moment to pass in the list of categories that can be displayed in the dropdown. The post handler here is gonna process the form where again, you can see the red squiggly is here. It's still using the type code. Uh, we're gonna come and have to come back and replace that. Before we do that though, let's go, let's go ahead and fix our view for this particular uh, um, action. So let's go down to events and add. And in the bottom of this uh, um, template, we're using our model, our add event view model here to render uh, a dropdown and see we've got some squigglies here. This is uh, one of the great things about using um, these view models is you get some compile time checking. So we're, you know, uh, without compile time checking, we could have we could have easily missed over these errors. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to refactor this. Instead of referencing the type property of our view model, I want to reference the category ID. Okay. And then the items are going to be displayed by the categories property. Okay, so just to, just to reiterate, this ASP items is the list of options that will be displayed in the dropdown. The ASP4 is going to dictate the name and value parameters that it gets submitted when this form is actually posted. And so that template is now up to date. Now we can go into our, uh, go back to our controller and refactor the code here. So let's see, what do I wanna do? So let's start with the get handler. So we're calling our event add event view model uh, constructor here and passing that view model into the view. Now we're still actually calling the no arc constructor which doesn't do anything. We really wanna call this uh, single arc constructor that we just made that takes a list of categories and uses that to properly populate the dropdown. As is, if we looked at the form here, there would be no no events or no categories listed in that dropdown for the uh, add event uh, form. So we need to pass in um, the List of categories. So let's just make a new list of uh, event category objects. And we're going to not create, not, not going to call, uh, not going to make that new by calling the constructor. What we're actually going to do is use the context. In our context, let's go look at our context, event DB context. Okay, so categories is the collection name. That's why I wasn't getting an auto suggest. So context.categories.to list. This will query the database for all the categories in the database and pass those, and we can pass those into the view model. All right, and so that refactors our get handler. Our post handler needs to be refactored to instead of setting the uh, type property there no longer is a type property and there are no longer is a uh, you know on the on the event class there are no longer is a type property on the view model either we want to set this to uh, to be something like category equals now what is it going to be equal to well let's go back to our view model our view model has this category id field this will be the id of the category that the user selected so we want to get that id then go fetch the object from the database and use that to construct our new event so before we do this, we need to say event category and we're going to get this off the DB context. Remember, that's how we query the database. And we're going to use find and we're going to pass in um, what do we want. We want the view model and we want the category ID. Okay, so context.categories.find will look for the one specific event category object that has this specific ID. That ID will be in the form submission, and then that object will be pulled out by any framework, put into this uh, local variable, and then I can use that local variable to assign the category for my new event object. 
Okay, and so um, that's it. So that's all of the refactoring we need to do to actually allow these things to relate to each other. Uh, there is one more piece though, actually. Let me uh, go to, um, yeah, so now that we're no longer using the event type class, we want to um, go ahead and just delete this. So uh, we are going to uh, refactor, just do some additional refactoring in the controllers in a moment. Um, but for now, we're going to just uh, delete this and then we'll pause and then we'll come back and finish our work.